All right, everybody, in this one, we have a 2015 or 16 uh, Kia Sorento. Um, has severe engine knock. I'm going to show you guys that into a minute. Um, what I want to do in this video is try to show you guys a procedure that you can use using some not basic tools, but tools that you can purchase pretty inexpensively and acquiring these tools and using these tools in order to take and uh, identify which cylinder could be at fault. All right, um, this is going to be pretty quick, uh, but I think it's going to give you guys a lot of information, especially when you're trying to decide, uh, especially when you get to a V6. And so when we have a front bank and a rear bank and the front bank is actually covered up by uh, all this uh, beautiful monstrosity uh, and we can't really get to anything, uh, these tests should be able to tell you um, if it's going to be necessary in order to remove the intake in order to get to your uh, coil packs and get in cylinder with some uh, specialized tools. So um, I'm going to show you guys with the sound of this engine. And from there, we're going to try to distinguish which cylinder is actually the problem cylinder using some pretty basic but advanced tools. All right, so let's get started with the engine sound and then we'll get started on uh, diagnosing this vehicle. All right, we are inside the car. I am going to start it and all you guys have to do is just listen. All right, I am not going to go any more than that. Uh, so from this point now, I'm going to set up the tooling and I'm going to show you guys the tooling that I'm going to be using in order to, to uh, verify which cylinder is the problem cylinder. And from there, hopefully, um, it'll be the front bank and we'll be able to see uh, what is going on. So I'm hoping it's going to be between cylinders 2, 4, and 6 because those are the ones that are accessible. And if not, well, then we have to remove the intake to go verify inside those cylinders or and verify the other cylinders. So let's get started. All right. So some of the basic, basic tools that you are going to need to start off this test is I believe that we're going to... Well, all right. So I believe that we are going to end up finding a uh, low compression onto this engine, onto specific cylinders. So the first test that I want to perform is just a relative compression test. All right, in order to do this, I would suggest that you guys get yourself a laptop. If you guys have a tablet, a scope, use the tablet. Um, I'm going to be using my laptop. Along with that, I'm going to be using the maxi scope. If you guys don't have the maxi scope, use whatever scope you do have. The Hantac 1008C is able to do all this. It's just that you really have to be careful with your settings or else you're not going to be able to get the, the proper definition needed in order to verify the waveform correctly. All right. So after that, uh, we are going to take and also hook up an amp lamp. All right. To my negative battery cable. Uh, you can go positive. You can go negative. I'm going negative on this one because uh, there was only one wire on my negative. So for me, it makes perfect sense. After that, we are going to take and hook up a uh, channel B to uh, ignition coil number two. So what this is going to do is going to be able to allow me to sync each cylinder. So if I have low compression on one cylinder, I'll actually be able to see that low compression. All right. Um, from there, all that's left is disable fuel or ignition. On this one right here, I disabled my fuel just by pulling this connector. All right. And now what we're going to do, we're going to take, go crank the car over and get some uh, data. And then we're going to try to decipher where, what that data is telling us. Okay. So let's get over, uh, get into the car and crank it. Ooh, that does not sound good. Uh, okay. So I had that up at 500 amps and I think it like buried the needle on 500. Uh, let's take this, let's come over here before I actually lose all my data. Yeah, all right. Um, I'll take this. I think I am going to have to, oh, I'm in zoom, that's why. All right, so let's see what is going on in here. All right, so from here to here, we are not actually seeing too much of a difference, are we? Well, number two is kind of low. Actually, there are a few of them that are actually kind of low. So if we come in here. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is go get the firing order. I'll be right back with that. And we're going to sync this with the firing order. Okay? Because these two seem pretty low compared to the rest, All right? And it's not just me, if I take and I zoom out a little bit. 
So if I take and I zoom out, here's my ignition sink, my ignition sink. I have high, higher, higher, low, low. Number two is actually pretty low. So I think that we're gonna have an issue on cylinder number two. Um, yeah, so let's go get the firing order and see which cylinders these are. So firing order, pretty easy on these ones. Uh, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we come on, we have two, three, four, five, six, then one, then two. So cylinders one and two seem to be the lowest out of them all. Um, if we come over, yeah. So cylinders one and two actually seem to be the lowest. These ones are actually, uh, have quite a bit more but like I said this is only relative guys so it's just comparing them to one another um, but yeah one and two is pretty low so what I'm gonna do right now I'm just gonna take out coil number two um, since coil number two seems to be pretty low and we're gonna use an uh, endoscope or a uh, camera just to verify inside to see if there is any uh, damage into that cylinder so let me take out the coil which is just gonna be this guy with a 10 millimeter all right take out this guy and we're gonna go in with a camera to see what's going on all right, so I'll try to give you guys a picture of this. So uh, this right here is normal, all right? There's nothing really going on with that. Um, what I'm going to do is just turn this guy ever so slightly, and we should start to get into... There they are. All right, so I don't know if you guys see the difference. This is normal. And we keep turning, keep turning, and there's the scoring on the cylinder wall. All right, so... Uh, confirmed and as we see we can also see a lot of oil on top of this piston um, that is not good uh, I'm pretty sure that there's blow by going on and we do have a loss of compression okay but you guys can clearly see that there is an issue with the cylinder wall and this car is gonna have to have an engine overhaul at this point so uh, some basic tooling some basic checks and roughly about 15 minutes in and we have a diagnosis so hope you guys enjoyed this one and as always I will see you guys next time